Korn's perspective on KDB. These days is a custom. But every single time you have a talk about some financial matters, you have a long paragraph of disclaimers. So, in the spirit of a disclaimer, please have a very close look at this magnificent painting of Salvador Dali. And just be reminded that the perspective I will share with you is very personal and very subjective. So, having found the formalities, let's start and let's meet a quant. A quant is a determined individual. <laughs> Bent on the idea of testing different investments. As you can see, he is armed and he is dangerous. He is armed in different statistical packages. Panda, Sass, Mantra, Idiot, and many others. He is quite skillful in operating few programming languages. VB, Java, C++, Python, Z Sharp. And he's an expert in extracting information from data, and he is ready to go. Well, probably not too many people have gone before. He faces a universe, a universe of financial data. Data on stocks, bonds, commodities, financial statements, indices, loans, derivatives, exchange rates, interest rates, infrastructure, capital investment, and many others. This data is owned, collected, distributed by multiple institutions, stock exchanges, brokers, investment banks, financial companies, and data providers. Some of the companies are big household names. Others are not very well known, rather obscure. There are examples of few companies which are participants in the data universe. This data, let me just move away from here, this data can be accessed through different channels, databases, whether these are SQL databases or non-SQL databases, it's one very popular channel. The second way that Quant can put their hands on the data are FTP sites. These are the places that vendor provide fairly custom format files that can be downloaded on a regular basis. Or a Quant can go to a portal where Ad hoc data requests can be downloaded in multiple but well-known formats. Finally, working with Excel, you can use Excel add-ins to download the data directly from the vendor server to your workbook. And here we have a dilemma. On one side, we have universe that offers a plethora of heterogeneous data of different quality, different consistency. Data which is owned by many different institutions that offer licenses which are very complicated sometimes. Data that you can get from multiple distribution channels and each of them with its own idiosyncrasies. On the other hand, you have a quant. A quant would like to have homogeneous, consistent data which is a perfect input to the statistical model. Okay, a solution to this dilemma is to take the relevant data and put it uh, into a repository. But you can think about this repository as a small bucket. And yes, Excel is very often used as such a repository because it's very convenient for data acquisition. You can read data to Excel from databases, through OTMC drives. You can read the data from files, whether these are XML files, flat files, which are delimited or fixed format. Or you can even go and use the Excel add-ins to download data from few vendors. Once you have the data in Excel, you can just visualize how the data looks like. You can use formulas in the VPE code to clean it, prepare the beautiful data set that you can find a lot of statistical packages, whether it's EDUs or SAS or MATLAB, each of them has a very good integration with Excel. But there is a problem. Excel has its limits and the universe is vast. You put too much data to Excel or you put too many formulas, let me assure, it will crash. 
way. So not to risk too much of being accused of serious overthinking of this problem, but if the data does not fit to a small bucket, we can use a big bucket. Uh, there's a big bucket of KDB. Right now, a quant can deal with terabytes of data rather than megabytes and still have a lot of functionality, much more functionality, which is required for data transformation. Once the raw data is loaded to KDB, we have to do something with this data to transform it into a ready data for statistical analysis. Quant would like to have a homogeneous, consistent data. A lot of financial analysis is based on the total return of time series of several assets. And preferably all those time, total returns are in the same currency. The total return is due to the price change of a particular asset, the cash flow that this asset generates, as well as any FX movements. Welcome, Indy. <laughs> And the good news is that all of this data transformation can be done within the database without leaving it through a QCO. Conceptually, we can think about data transformation as made of five steps. First, we have to assess the data, how good it is. There are for data quality, the breadth, the depth, consistency. And I'm not talking about sample data, I'm talking about the full set of data, and they come in a chance of 50 to 100 million, and sometimes much more records. You would like to bring all of them, run a bunch of different statistics, and now that's what I have. Once you know how good or bad the data is, you decide to do some cleansing, because it's difficult to work on the bad data. And this cleansing, you know, the older data you have, the much worse quality it is. Fortunately, this data that we receive usually comes with a lot of redundancy. So from different elements, you can calculate the missing element, or you can check how good the calculations are in comparison to the original data. This allows you to provide the reasonable quality data for the next step. The next step, a fairly controversial step, is the data enhancing. You would like to create new data from what you've got. Well, think about what you are going to get from London Stock Exchange. There will be prices of stocks, dividends, splits, you know, and some kind of a corporate action. Well, first thing you have to do is take all those elements and convert them to the total return. And then because the stocks in London are quoted in British pound, and you're a Canadian investor, you have to convert it to Canadian dollar, the total return. And then you have to ask yourself whether you are doing it at the spot rate or you are going to hedge the currency. Here you did a few things to create the new data, total return. Once you've done it, you save. In some other, other example is you get the rates, treasury bill rates, three months, and you would like to convert them into total return to know how much you would have made should you reinvest into three months TV contracts. The next step is describing the data. And the description can be as primitive as a catalog, or as complicated as a metadata that is capable of running the code, both the code for data transformation and code for data access. In each of those two cases, or any case between, the description of the data itself can reside in the KDB, so you have a one place where you have your raw data, your rules coming on to process the data, as well as the final data. And finally, in a more controversial step, you want to denormalize the data. You have introduced a lot of redundancy. Because your data access will be much easier and will be much faster. Faster maybe I'll be charged on it, but in the terms of ease of access, it's pretty easy at that point. And once you apply all those steps, you can clearly see how the raw data is being transformed to a perfect set of ready data. But pure magic. Pure magic. Here's the example of uh, ready data, kind of a stylized example, but to provide an idea, to give you an idea. The first column contains data, the second is a company, and the third one is a price in local currency. Up to now, the table is totally normal, there is no redundancy. As a part of the enhancement process, we calculate, and this is a data, these are the data for a few selected uh, companies, uh, Canadian and American. During the enhancement process, we calculate prices in Canadian dollar and in US dollar. 
And we are introducing a little bit of redundancy because obviously the price of Canadian bond in local currency and the price of Canadian bond in Canadian dollar will be the same. But it's okay. The storage is cheap, but it's much easier for us to access the data. The last two columns have a lot of redundancy in them. I keep repeating that Bank of Montreal is being priced in Canadian dollar many times, every day as a matter of fact. And I keep repeating that Bank of Montreal belongs to industry banks rather than capturing only ones. So definitely, this data is not normal. The columns from 4 to 8 make it very denormalized. The reason why we do it is for the access facility, ease of access, and speed of access. But here's an example of data access. All those uh, three examples, as a matter of fact, provide the daily calculation of returns for Canadian banks. In local currency, the first query, in the Canadian currency, in the US currency. The results set are very nicely organized in a very convenient format. You can very easily compare them. Different columns correspond to the daily returns of different banks. You can draw very easily, for example, in Excel would be a perfect input for a graph. Or you can very easily know, load it to statistical packages, which look at the data in the matrix format. So it's perfect format. Access selection criteria are trivial. There is no joint to any table. The only condition is provided is some value of a column that the company, that the uh, industry is equal banks. You might not see it from a distance, but there is a single condition. Thus, calculation of return in the local currency or in the US currency or Canadian currency are exactly the same because with the enhancement process, it has to be calculated some data. So this redundancy pays off significantly in terms of a data access which is much easier if you are trying to have a normalized data. So, here is a happy one, finally got the data. That was the meaning of this plan. Conclusions. I think it's a very good fit between uh, KDB and quants because you can deal with a large volume of data, terabytes, and you have a functionality that allows you to transform raw data to the ready data in a very efficient fashion. I think it can be even better. And I have those three wishes. So wish number one. Better integration with standard quant tools. It would be fascinating if it was provided out of the box. A VBA integration of KDB, so I can read the data to my VB code from KDB directly, not asking a friendly IT person to write a very complicated C sharp add-in to support in me my handling. Or to read the same data to MATLAB. That would be spectacular. The second wish, more utilities. You know what? I have a file, I would like to load it to the database. Yes, it would be handy to have a kind of a tool that allows me to load it. And save this table, display table, as a partition table. And uh, walk me through this process. To be able to download the data in the format that I can load to another database. It would be even better. I fully understand that somebody who is a very technically savvy and is really a good C sharp developer and Q developer will be able to write those utilities and will not be complaining about it. But realize that lack of such utilities, real, ready, prepackaged, create an extra entry barrier for a quant. A little hesitation whether it is the right technology to use. And the final is which I I might be very lucky to have it satisfied because I told one of the people here who said that's what they do. Better editor. Maybe even integrated development environment that helps a little bit of writing the code and debugging and maybe even can produce the like the documentation so it's easier to maintain the solution that we are putting in place. So those three wishes, maybe some naive, maybe some more realistic, conclude my presentation and thank you very much for your attention.